Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Fickle. Fickle is for two to five players, takes about 45 minutes to play or less, and is for ages, I would say, 11 and up. In the game Fickle, it is a pressure luck tableau management game, and by that I mean that you're going to be getting cards, three of them by, for each round, and you're going to look at them and organize them how you will, place them down either left or to your right, and everybody else will do the same in a somewhat draft style motion, and then players are going to draw from those decks that you've assigned, and they can choose to keep the card that they see, or get rid of it and draw a new one. And they can keep doing that until they get to the last card, in which case I have to keep that card, placing it in their tableau. With Fickle, though, you have to be very fickle because when you're playing with fairies, they tend to only like to be by themselves or in large clusters, which means that at the end of the game, if you have five or more fairies of the same family, you're going to score a bunch of points. Additionally, if you have only one fairy of a family, you're going to score points as well. But when it comes to two, three, and four fairies in a family, you'll either score nothing or negative points, and you do not want to score negative in this game. Players will go through this about five rounds, in which case, at the end of the fifth round, you're going to score all the points in front of you. All the fairies are from different families and you can kind of make your own deck to play with every single time with everybody and of course the game comes with its own unique sets that you can play with or you can create your own of the many different fairy varieties whoever has the most points is the winner at the end of the game fickle let's go ahead and take a look at what you get and then how to play the game so here we have the game fickle and everything included and as you can see there is quite a lot of different fairies each of these are their own unique deck but they all do the same thing the difference between them all in each deck is the numbers on the top left hand corner and they range from one to five points and you're gonna be scoring those provided you only have one or five or more fairies in your family in your tableau you want to make sure that you get as little as possible or as many as possible uh, this is the round scoring board in which you're gonna have these little fickle tokens that are gonna go down from the first round all the way down to the final round and these are gonna determine which way you're gonna be passing those Deck, there's decks of three cards, either left or right, counterclockwise or clockwise. Additionally, there's going to be a token that will symbolize who is going to be uh, it, having priority if the cards are tied. And then there's also a round token that's going to go around explaining how all of the rounds work. Eventually, after playing this game enough times, you're not really going to need that, though, because the game's fairly simple to understand. Additionally, there is this little uh, tracker here that tells you that you're going to start from five and go down to one when you're determining what cards are going to be enacted at what point in time uh, as well as you're going to be receiving these uh, reference cards here which are very very useful they explain basically what points you're gonna score based on the number of fairies in each family you have at the end of the game and additionally how rounds are played which is also covered here on the main board and you're going to be getting this a rule book and of course a box which I don't have but there's a picture here and uh, then we're gonna go now and show you how to play the game it can play up to five players and it plays the same regardless of the nine of players let's go ahead and choose five fairy decks and get them together and play the the game fickle so here we have the game fickle and everything included as you can see we're gonna go ahead and set up a deck now of five fairies and you can choose any ones that you want or you can use the game's constructed decks already set up for you those are for beginners or for I guess experienced players if you like as well but I'll just go ahead and take the uh, first five I see so we'll take all of these guys here the rest of these we won't use for this game but we may use for another game in which case now we're gonna take this deck of cards here and we're going to shuffle it and make a deck of cards to play for this specific game. Now you can play um, multiple games, I guess, if you'd like, and it can be best two out of three, utilizing all of the cards here if you'd like, or you can just simply play the person who has the most points at the end of this round is the winner. Everybody's gonna get one of these references. They're actually front and back the same, but you can give players two of them just so that they can see them uh, both on one side. It makes it a little easier, I suppose. And we'll just play this with three players so you get a good idea of how it works. After they're good and shuffled, they're gonna go ahead and put at the start of the round. Then you're going to give everybody three cards to begin the game. After you give everybody three cards, they're gonna look at their cards and they're going to go ahead and choose two of them to play in their tableau. These are just gonna start there. They don't have any special abilities that enact. The rest of them will get discarded. So this guy's gonna choose a dispel and a switch because they're the highest point value. This guy will take a purge and a noble. And this guy over here is gonna go ahead and take a switch and a purge and everything else is gonna get discarded. Now the reason why they're choosing these and not the same types is because if you have one fairy, and it tells you on here, one fairy will score you that value. So in this case, he has six points, he has seven, and he has seven. If there are two fairies in the same family, that means that the whole family is gonna score nothing. 
If there's three or four fairies in the same family, the highest card value will score negatively for you. And if you get five or more of the same family, all of them will score for you, which is very, very useful, right? But in this case, we want to start just like this. And then after that, we're going to begin the first round. You're going to go ahead and flip a token, which is going to be like this. And then it's going to tell you which way the decks are passed. In this case, it's going to be uh, going to your left. And everybody's going to get three cards once again. After everybody has their three cards, they're then going to look at the three cards and choose the order in which they want the players to uh, be able to look at them. So he chose that order. Let's go ahead and say he chose this one and uh, he chose this one. These are the decks just like this. And then they're gonna all get pass going this way. So he would pass his deck to him, he would pass his deck to him and he would pass his deck to him. And it's gonna say you resolving any delayed effects that may happen, dealing the three cards out which we did, stacking them up and then passing them. And then now everybody is going to go to the dismiss and choose a card. So this player is going to start by having this deck like this, drawing the top card and determining if he wants it along with the ability. If he doesn't want the card, he'll discard it and go for a new one. And then eventually he will go ahead and select one and place it down. Uh, all the cards are gonna be played at the same time. Uh, the rest of them will get discarded, so he'll take that. And it's kind of interesting, like, do you want to uh, go further, or do you like what's there? And sometimes what's further is better, but it just depends on what players are passing to you. This one seems pretty useful, so we'll take that. Take that. But he lost out on these purges, which is good, because you don't want to have two or three or four of the same family, unless you're going for all purges that you possibly can. This player is going to go, ooh, he doesn't want the switch, because that would make his three go be worth zero. And then this is a dispel worth five. That's really good, so he'll keep that one. After everybody has their new cards out, they're then going to go in uh, an order. So this guy, will st we'll start with this token on this guy here. And he's got a one, he's got a two, he's got a five. So this is going to start with five, which means five goes first. And this one says to take a fairy from an, any alliance and put it into a dismiss pile. So he can go ahead and get rid of this fairy. Uh, any alliance he wants and removing it. Then we move on to four, three, and then two, which would be this one here. And this one says pick an opponent. They discard their fairy in hand and then draw a new card from the fairy deck. So if they have a fairy in hand, like this guy hasn't played his yet, he'd actually lose his fairy, drawing a new fairy from the deck and placing it out there. And then this guy's gonna trigger next, and it says the same thing with this, but there's nobody with any fairies in hand, and so in which case he just keeps this just like that. After that is done and the fairy powers have been concluded, you're gonna go ahead and give the court crier to the player who played last, which will be this guy, and then end of round and final scoring if it was the last round of the game. Otherwise, you're gonna start again and you're gonna deal out cards again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then players are gonna take them. They're gonna flip over a new one of these. And once they're gonna go this way, sometimes it'll actually go the opposite way. In which case, players are gonna make their decks again and deal them out and players are gonna be able to go ahead and choose. And that is the basic idea of the game. There's a bunch of different fairies that do different things. Switch lets you exchange a fairy from your alliance for a fairy in an opponent's alliance of the same, uh, of equal favor value. And these are favor values here. Uh, you have Mimic, the one copy of direct power in anybody's alliance, uh, and then resolve the effect uh, targeting that same alliance, and so on and so forth. This one here purges fairies, this one dispels fairies by dismissing them. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. So let's go ahead and show you an end of game scoring. Let's say that all five of these rounds have concluded, and uh, let's just go ahead and give people some cards here. Just so you get a good idea of how scoring is going to work. And this. So we'll just say that this is the end. This is what it looks like at the very end of the game, which may or may not be the case. Uh, this player is going to score zero for this because he has two. He's going to score normally zero for this, but in this case it says at the end of the game, the highest noble fairy is going to score you positively, so he'd score three there. And then this player would score three more for only having one purge fairy, so that's a total of six points for this guy. Zero for this. There's two dispels here, so zero for this. Uh, so there's four and four, which is eight points. And then this guy has a two and a one for three. So in this case, this player would be the winner at the end of the game for the game Fickle. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and shuffle the deck again and play again, or draw five new fairies and play a whole new game. And that's basically how you play the game, of course, with different abilities. Some of them will let you be protect, will protect you from things that happen. Some of them are just simply direct spells. Other ones are end of game effects, all kinds of different fairies that do different things in the game. All right, let's come up. I'll give you my review and any caveats. All right, so caveats for the game. Now, first of all, any rules on the cards supersede any rules that would be in the rule book. There are certain ones that do certain things, like for instance, illusions are actually fairies that can be in their own family, or you can add them to other families, which will help you in gathering more than 
four of a family because like I said five or more will score you a bunch of points whereas only one is going to score you the, the value of that card anything else is going to be either negative or zero in which you don't want and uh, like, I, like I said we need, we, uh, there's also the defensive cards that can protect you from other fairies abilities which is also really cool so let's get into the review of this game first of all the artwork is very good and I mean that seriously I really enjoyed the artwork for this game it's got a lot of cool little fairies and they all have their own unique abilities there's 16 of them and there's a ton of different combinations that's how you want to set the game up some combinations are better or I should say more fun than others the ones presented in the book are definitely my favorites they have it'll tell you which cards you should add to the decks however you can make your own up and sometimes that can work out fairly well as well I think it just depends really uh, additionally the board you're gonna be utilizing the board as far as how the turn trackers work but even through the example I was like I don't really need to use this that much because I now know how to use it because the game is very easy to pick up very simplistic in nature and once you've got it down for the first round you won't really need to start using that as much uh, the town crier is a nice way to change up who is going to be enacting what ability first additionally the person who goes last is always the person who's going to have that which will give them some kind of boost as well I like that uh, this game has a lot of unique and interesting mechanics the first one is it's pushing your luck but it's making your opponent push your luck based on the knowledge of the cards that you've placed in the order you place them in you know what they need and so you're going to change in the way in which they're going to be drawing cards which is fun i really really enjoyed that aspect of the game additionally you don't know which way you're going to be turning uh, left or right depending on the round which is kind of an interesting aspect and it has that set collection aspect too which is you only want one or you want the most it doesn't punish you for having a ton of them but it punishes you right in the middle which is an interesting concept i really dug that as well the games are quick and you want to play again after you've played the first time we play this game many times over many different players and when you run out of cards you simply shuffle that discard pile back and put it into the make a new deck out of that and keep going throughout the game uh as far as the other uh, any other negatives i'd have one of them would be probably i'd like to see even more players in this game or even a larger stack of cards to draw from because i really enjoyed the pulling of the cards it just felt fun to do that messing with your opponents putting a one a four and a one and they're like oh, i should have taken that four but i thought the next card would have been even better or Oh no, all of these cards are no good, which can happen as well. If you have three cards and you just happen to get three shares and you already have one of them, well now it's very unlikely that you're going to get five down there on your tableau. And it's also unlikely that you're going to be drawing anything other than a share because that's all there is for what you have. But the fairies change things and the way the abilities work, they can be giving, you can be giving players certain fairies from your family or taking them away from them or dismissing them, cards that protect you and all that kind of stuff. I really, really enjoyed this game. This is a game that I would definitely suggest for players that like pushing their luck, also making players push their luck, and also enjoy tableau management. It has a little bit of everything, but nothing is too complex, nothing is too difficult, and the game works very well. Beautiful artwork, beautiful theme, really cool idea, definitely enjoy me some fickle. This game is getting our seal of approval just because of all the unique and interesting mechanics presented in this game and how quick it is to play. It's something I'm going to be bringing out more and more as I find new people that want to try some push your luck games. I, I really, really enjoy this game. Check it out down below in the description if you think you would too. All right, guys, thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer card game board game review. Check out the rest of our stuff here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It helps. We do greatly appreciate it as well as taking a look at all the other Kickstarter games there and our website, unfiltergamer.com. We got a ton of great blog posts, giveaways, and all other kinds of things. We're giving away two games right now. We're giving away Bloodborne by Simon, and we're also giving away D&D &D and Dogs, the board game. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, do go ahead and take a look, as well as take a look at Fickle. Fickle is a really fun little fairy game. It has some really interesting components, really interesting mechanisms or mechanics, and it's very unique to something I've ever, to anything I've ever seen before as far as pushing your luck and tableau management goes. It adds a little twist and I like that. And the game name works with the theme of the game. You're being very fickle with what your choices are. And don't forget to check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They give away a ton of great stuff and they work with us quite a lot. I do really appreciate them. Don't forget to check out our live streams too every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. You can check out our Facebook page and that will tell you when our next live stream is. Sometimes we change it if we are going away for vacation or a con. All right, guys, that was all I got. And as always, I look forward to being fickle about ending this video. I mean, we could end it if you really wanted to. I mean, it's probably past that 10 minute mark, so. All right, that's it. No. Okay, we're ending the video now.